Okay, well, welcome. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, we are thrilled today to be hosting this continuing education webinar on veterinary fluid therapy, basic understanding and practical application. It is sponsored today by International Win. I am Sandy Spinagle. I am NAFTA's communications, communications director. I'm the one that sends you all sorts of emails often. If you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to type them in the webinar interface on your screen, and Dr. Donowick will answer them offline, and then we're going to post those answers on NAFTA's website. If you want to tweet during the presentation, please reference NAFTA with our Twitter handle, VetTechs, and use the hashtag NAFTA. At the end of the presentation, we'll provide a link to the CE quiz and a brief summer, brief survey. Um, feel free to email Adrian Lawrence with any questions at editor at nafta.net. And we'll get started. Um, to introduce our presenter today, he is the CEO and founder of International Win. Dr. William J. Donowick joins us today as our presenter. He is a veterinarian and an expert in the field. He holds several patents and has written more than 90 abstracts, papers, letters, book chapters, and articles published in scientific and non-scientific magazines. And I will now turn it over to Dr. Donowick. Well, thank you very, very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. For the folks that are attending, thank you for taking your lunch time to visit with us today. Uh, as a veterinarian, I was a large animal surgeon. I spent most of my career at the University of Pennsylvania, and one of my interests early on was fluid therapy. And believe it or not, uh, when I graduated, which was in the 60s, nobody, virtually nobody, thought about giving fluids, electrolytes, to a sick animal, even though it had been pretty well established in human medicine that it was of primary importance to maintain and and create health uh, in humans it just wasn't passing down to veterinary medicine. And so uh, we were given the opportunity to kind of be leaders in this field and develop uh, procedures and protocols for caring for especially large animals, which was my interest, but it passed on to uh, small animals as well. So um, I've had a lot of experience and uh, I've taught this part of veterinary medicine to veterinary students for many years. And it's a pleasure to be able to meet with you folks and pass on to the technician who's so vitally important to veterinary medicine today some of the basic understandings and, and practical things that uh, relate to fluid therapy that you probably do every day. Um, I'm hoping that this will be a first in a series of webinars on, on fluid and acid base balance. And the idea is that for you to be able to provide the best patient care, uh, you need both a basic understanding and the practical skills to be able to uh, carry out your duties. Now, I made an assumption. The assumption is that uh, most of you are already practicing technicians and with varied backgrounds. And so what I've tried to do is put together for you some basic knowledge. So we'll build on some basic knowledge and then pick out uh, an area that, that we might focus in on that's on the practical side. So it'll allow you to be able to take what you learn and use it today. That's the whole idea that I've tried to put together. But let me tell you, I want, first I'd like to have you just sit back, relax, maybe get a pencil and paper because towards the end you might want us to copy down some emails and, and uh, uh, places to go for information and to provide, uh, provide information. But um, let, me, let me give you a, what we're going to do under basic understandings. Uh, this is a list of, you're going to accomplish all these things. You're going to be good at it by the time you get through. Um, first, why is normal water balance so important? Here's an interesting one. Where did the Earth's water come from? The fact is that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. So what are you going to do? How are you going to handle the problem in, in all the animals, um, large and small? So how do you hydrate a patient that won't drink? And how much does a patient need on a daily basis? Question, why can't we just give pure water IV? 
how exact do the calculations have to be to give fluids to an animal? Do you know what a milliequivalent is? It's the unit of measure that's used in almost everything in, in fluid therapy, so we got to be sure we know what that is. And what is an isotonic solution? Uh, is normal saline isotonic, for instance? What IV solution should I use to rehydrate, maintain a patient? And then examples of good IV placement, replacement solutions and why. Why they're the good ones and what ones we might avoid. As far as the practical skills, what I've picked on is aseptic technique as it relates to uh, putting in catheters, maintaining IV lines. And so we're going to cover that. Uh, I'm going to tell you a horror story that uh, relates to the University of Pennsylvania while I was there and uh, show you how we solved it and how we've made things so much better there. So let's move on. Well, the importance of water balance. Um, you know, we can go for virtually weeks, both animals and human beings, without food. But if you don't have water, your survival time is about a week. Um, and if you're losing water beyond that, besides just surviving, then the time of survival is even less. So when our patients are sick and they don't drink, or they uh, refuse to drink, or they're losing extra water, if we don't put it back, their overall condition is going to deteriorate rapidly. I told you I was going to talk to you about where the Earth's water come from. Do you ever think about that? Um, there's a whole lot of water on Earth. Three quarters is covered by water. But where did it come from? Well, nobody knows for sure, but they're pretty sure they know. But here is an interesting super fact that you can carry out and ask the veterinarians that you work with. The fact is there's exactly the same amount of water on Earth today as there was in the time of the dinosaurs and go back two or three billion years. We don't make water now. The water that's here is the original water. And the beautiful part about it is that it is the perfect recycled material. We use it over and over again. The earth cleans it up for us, or we help a little bit. And it's used. And so the next time you open a 16-ounce bottle of water, take the cover off, go to take a drink, think about this. It may well be that a dinosaur 260 million years ago drank that water just like you are today. It was used, sustained that dinosaur, was put back into the environment, cleaned up, and used again. Well, where did it come from? It came from outer space. When the Earth was formed, when the universe was formed, uh, water was formed. It's two hydrogens and an oxygen. And that water was formed in the initial Big Bang and the Bing Bang resulted in molten material that coalesced to form the planets. And believe it or not, there's enough, there was enough water in that rock that when it cooled, it created all the oceans and all the water that's available to us today. And life could not exist without water. And if you follow the news at all, there's a new little rover on Mars and what is its main purpose running around Mars down in that canyon that it's in? It's looking for water. Because man could go to, water, go to Mars uh, if there's water there. Why? Because H2O is oxygen, and the hydrogens that are there, the H's, the hydrogens, could be a source of energy. So to sustain man on Mars, we've got to have water. And if it's there, Hooray, we might be able to go there someday. Okay, well, I've already told you that uh, we can live without food, but we can't live without water. 